Nucleophilic aromatic substitution is going to be the topic of this lesson. And, uh, at the beginning of this chapter, we covered EAS reactions, and there's a lot more variety when it comes to those EAS reactions, and there's ortho pair directors versus meta directors, and there's a lot more to discuss. We're going to find out this is a, a lot simpler, there's a lot less options, a lot less directing going on, and things of this sort, uh, so a little bit easier to handle. We're also going to find out there's really two mechanisms that are possible here, not just one like we saw with EAS. And we're going to talk about both of those mechanisms and how you can predict which is probably going on in your particular NAS reaction. Now this lesson's part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post one, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. All right, so nucleophilic aromatic substitution, or NAS for short. So uh, in this case, we're not replacing a hydrogen like we did with EAS reactions. We need a good leaving group. We need a halogen, chlorine, bromine, pretty common here. Uh, we also need a very strong nucleophile. And if we're adding a very strong nucleophile now for nucleophilic aromatic substitution, that means that your benzene ring is going to be acting as the electrophile instead. So in an EAS reaction, benzene was the, acting as the nucleophile. But in, in an NAS reaction, benzene is actually acting as the electrophile instead, as we'll see. Cool, we need a pretty strong nucleophile in this case. So just like benzene's pretty unreactive as a nucleophile, it's also not the strongest electrophile either. So we're gonna need a pretty strong nucleophile and, and the vast majority of the ones we'd look at are gonna have a negative charge. And so some common examples here would be like NaNH2 where you got the amide ion, uh, maybe NaOH or NaOCH3, so either hydroxide or an alkoxide, something with a negative charge typically. And so in this case, uh, you might replace the Cl with NH2, an OH, or an OCH3. Any of those are options. Sometimes we'll do this with uh, uh, ammonia, just plain old NH3 under uh, harsher conditions and stuff like that and get that to work. Uh, but these are going to be some of the most typical. And so we're going to take a look at one of the mechanisms here. And I'm going to specifically use NaNH2 in our mechanism here. And so we've got two possible mechanisms here. And the first one here is called the addition elimination mechanism. So there's two major mechanistic steps to this, and you might guess what they are. Well, the first one's addition and the second one's elimination. We'll find out the, the second mechanism, one of the names it goes by is elimination addition. It just changes the order in which things happen here. So, but we're gonna have nucleophilic addition first. And in this case, again, I'm gonna use NaNH2. So, and the sodium's just a spectator here. It's the amide ion that's gonna be our strong nucleophile. And, and so first thing you're gonna do is come and do nucleophilic attack where the leaving group is. So, but this is not SN2, it's not backside attack. We can't kick off the chlorine, it turns out in the same step because we can't even get access to the backside. And so it's gonna push these electrons out onto this carbon forming a carbanion. All right, so this thing is going to be resonance stabilized. This anion is one bond away from pi electrons, and we'll get three resonance structures uh, at the very least, it turns out. Uh, and in this case, that's the addition step, and now we've got to do the elimination step. In an elimination reaction, we form a pi bond, and so it turns out these electrons are just going to go right back into forming a pi bond and kick off the leaving group. So there's our elimination step. And so as long as I don't show the resonance, it's a lot easier to see that this really is just a two-step mechanism here. Cool, and let's go ahead and show the resonance going on here as well. So the resonance involved would be, you know, lone pair becomes a pi bond, pi bond becomes a lone pair. And same thing, we're one bond away from a pi bond still, and so lone pair is going to become a pi bond, pi bond is going to become a lone pair, and we'll get our third resonance structure. Okay. Big takeaway here is where that negative charge is delocalized. If we look at our three resonance structures, relative to our leaving group, which was there to begin with, we can see that in our intermediate, our carbanion intermediate, that negative charge is gonna be shared on the ortho, 
on the para and on the other ortho position. And it turns out this mechanism is actually only likely if you've got some electron withdrawing substituents to help stabilize that. And so it turns out it'd be really helpful if we had say like a couple of NO2 groups. So in say like the ortho and para positions. In fact, we put another one in this ortho even better. So because those groups help stabilize the anion. And we can see that in a couple of key places here. So I said we'd have at least three resonant structures. If we actually add those electron withdrawing groups in across the board, it makes this mechanism one really likely now, because not only do we get resonance, you know, going throughout the carbons of the ring, you could actually, if you draw the NO2 structure out, push the electrons out to the NO2 and put a negative charge on the oxygens. And so from this structure, we'd get an additional resonant structure. And we'd also get one from this one out with this NO2. So we actually get additional resonant structures that share the negative charge on an oxygen, not just on a carbon, and it, it stabilized this carbanion intermediate significantly. And so it turns out uh, you only get a chance to do this kind of additional resonant stabilization when these electron withdrawing groups, like these nitro groups, are ortho or para, not meta. And so if you look at reactivity of typical aryl halides here for NAS reactions, so the stronger the electron withdrawing groups, the more reactive and the more of them you have in the ortho and para positions. So if I attach another nitro group over here in the other ortho position, it would be even more reactive in an NAS reaction. And so some of the times, sometimes the question you'll get is which of the following would be most reactive in an NAS reaction. And so you, now you want electron withdrawing groups, not donating. So if you recall with EAS reactions, the intermediate was the sigma complex, a carbocation. And so it's donating groups that would help stabilize that electron deficient carbocation. But now we have a carb carbanion intermediate instead. And so now we want electron withdrawing groups to help stabilize it instead. So if you recall, we talked about uh, these electron donating groups and withdrawing groups as being classified as activating and deactivating. So, but we discussed that in the context of the EAS reactions. And we found out that for EAS specifically, it was the donating groups that were activating, had a lower activation energy and went faster than plain old benzene. And then it was with withdrawing groups that they were deactivating and they had a higher activation energy than plain old benzene and went slower. Well, it's the exact opposite now because now benzene is the electrophile, not the nucleophile. Now our intermediate has a negative charge not a positive charge. And so now for NAS, it's the withdrawing groups that are activating and the donating groups that would be deactivating instead. Let's take a look at the second mechanism for this reaction. All right, so now we'll take a look at the second mechanism, which reverses the order of steps here. It's elimination addition. It's also called the benzyne mechanism sometimes, based on this benzyne, which is gonna be a really weird intermediate structure along the way here. So uh, in this case, same reagent, so like NaNH2 and stuff like that. The big thing here is this mechanism becomes the more likely mechanism when you don't have electron withdrawing groups to stabilize a carbanion intermediate. And so this one's not gonna proceed through a uh, carbanion intermediate in the first step when we do elimination, like we did when we did addition here. So that it would actually come later. And so for the rate determining step here, this won't involve a carbanion. It's going to involve this funky benzyne intermediate. Uh, and when you don't have electron withdrawing groups on your ring besides your leaving group, that becomes the more likely mechanism. So here we have got a methyl group and notice that's an actually an electron donating group. It'll destabilize things. So, but I put them on there so that we could see the relevance of, uh, getting some different regioisomers as products. And we would only be able to see that if we had something to, you know, kind of keep us grounded and keep track of where things were here. So uh, it turns out we're gonna need to draw in a hydrogen here. And so first step is elimination and we're gonna deprotonate to accomplish elimination. And it's gonna look very E2-like here. We're gonna deprotonate this hydrogen, which frees up these electrons to form a, an additional pi bond, a triple bond, which kicks off the leaving group so that we don't violate the octet rule. Cool, and it's this lovely structure here that we refer to as the benzyne. Notice we also formed a chloride ion and and we'll just draw it out as ammonia and some ammonia. All right, so we've done the elimination. Guess what comes next? Yes, the addition. And so now we're actually going to add our nucleophile. And so in this case, we've got another equivalent of the amide ion gonna be used here. 
And so in this case, we've got two options though. It can add to either side of where the triple bond is. And so one of those is it could add right where the leaving group used to be, but it could also add on the other side as well. And so the consequence of this is that we're actually gonna get two products in the end. And I'm gonna skip right to those real quick. And so in this case, this last Regio isomer here uh, would not be possible if we were just doing the addition elimination mechanism. Additional elimination, uh, the substitution occurs right where the leaving group used to be. So, but with elimination addition, the benzyne mechanism, you can replace right where the leaving group used to be or either adjacent carbon is possible leading to this Regio isomer. So, uh, you know, a lot of students will ask me, well, how do you know which mechanism you're gonna do and stuff like this? Well, again, one way is the presence or absence of these electron withdrawing groups. If you've got them, it makes, again, addition elimination more likely. If you don't have them, then it makes elimination addition more likely. Well, one other way you can tell, like if you were doing this in the lab, is just look at what products you create. So if I got both these products, I would know right off the bat that it had to have happened via elimination addition. Notice this is not how I predict a mechanism that's going to occur. It's just taking a look at the products that I formed in the lab and figuring out which mechanism it went after the fact, you know, went by after the fact. So that's kind of the deal here. So uh, in this case, I'm just going to show, you know, formation of this guy. So because I'm going to attack at that carbon, but had we attacked over at this carbon instead, that's where that one would be formed. So I'll show one of the two, but it's directly analogous. So in this case, we're going to do our nucleophilic attack now, a nucleophilic addition. So oh, I said I was going to do the other one. Let's go and hit the other side. My bad. That's going to push these electrons back over to that carbon there to form a carbanion. And there's our anion. And then going back to this ammonia we formed right back over here, that's gonna be our proton source, our Bronsted acid. And we'll just simply protonate this guy. Reforming some amide ion. Cool, and that's gonna get us all the way to this guy right here. And once again, had we attacked on this carbon and pushed the electrons over here instead, that's where we would have formed this Regio isomer instead. So, but those are your two mechanisms. Uh, these can show up in a synthesis context. We know how to stick a chlorine or a bromine on your benzene ring uh, with like a, a Friedel crafts with EAS bromination and chlorination. So, and then we could replace it potentially with like a methoxy group or hydroxide or an amine and stuff like this. Uh, but we've also got other ways to add the amine. We, we already learned how to do nitration and follow that up with reduction to form the amine as well. So uh, you're probably gonna find that these aren't the most helpful things from a synthesis perspective on the problems you're likely to encounter in your curriculum. Now, does that mean they're not helpful from a synthesis per, you know, perspective in the lab and stuff like that? Well, again, you got a lot more options with EAS, but there's definitely causes for using these in a variety of places. And maybe you come across an example where you use them, but your synthesis problems in this chapter are much more likely to be using a lot of your EAS reactions and a lot of your side chain reactions instead. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Pretty much the best thing you can do to make sure other students get to see this lesson as well. And if you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you're looking for practice problems, uh, a final exam rapid review or practice final exams, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.